whole lot long, but I don't mind because uh, we're, we're, I've, I've sent a TV station all the messages for the rest of the year, so I'm not concerned about the TV. I can always edit. But there were some things said last week that I want to go, I want to, I want to say again. And one of the things that God gave me was that anything that God did in the Bible, Anything, any miracle that God did in the Old Testament, Jesus did in the four Gospels, the disciples did in the epistles, the letters, and beyond all of that. Any, any of those things can be done by any Christian because they have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. Any Christian. You say, well, Brother Paul... You, you you know, I didn't like that last week. And here you're saying it again this week. That's why I'm saying it, because I know you didn't like it. See, because that man, that, 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 that puts a plumb line beside you. And, 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 and you, you come up crooked. Why? Because you see that you're not doing the things that, 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 that God would have you to do. And I tell you the truth, I'm not doing as much as I used to do. So I'm, so I'm crooked too. Don't get me wrong. Hmm? Anything that, 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 that any miracle that God did in the Old Testament, Jesus did in the four Gospels, or the disciples did in the letters, and beyond that, can be done by any Christian because they have the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit that does the work. It's not us. It's not us. It wasn't Moses. <laughs> it wasn't Joshua. It wasn't King David. It, it was not. Hello. And let me go a step further. It was not Jesus. It was the Holy Spirit. Doing the work through him. He operated as man. He operated as man filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible said he had the spirit without measure. And the spirit without measure, he performed miracles. And then he tells us in the 12th, the Daniel read it for us, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That's exactly what God spoke to me right here. You see how God's word, how he, what he spoke, it's the same as what's in the scripture. It's the same thing. It's just said it, he just said it a different way. Because he's trying to bring impact. Hmm? And we my my question is, why why are we not experiencing it? And the answer is going to be, and the answer is we're not experiencing it because we're not teaching it in our churches. Hmm? The churches are not are not teaching it. Hmm. Another thing I said that y'all didn't like last week. <laughs> Hello. Another thing I, I said last week y'all didn't like was Christians are not good believers. <laughs> you know, how do you know we don't like it? Because I can feel it. I can feel it when you don't like it. Amen. You, you can be muted and I can still feel it. Amen. Christians are not good believers. Or well, they talk a good game. Christians talk a good game, but they don't believe it. Do they, be, do they believe, do they believe what they're hearing? Do they believe what they're reading? Do they believe what they're studying? Do they believe what Pastor Paul has been, been running down their throats for the last year or so about John 14, 12? Hmm? Greater works will we do. Do they believe it? Are they real believers? Are they laying hands on everybody they can? Come on, oh, I ain't talking about just going there arbitrarily, but as opportunity presents itself, you should be doing it in the home for them children, for them babies. Hello, right? Lay hands on them. But Christians are not very good believers. The Holy Spirit is in us and He's all of God, 100% God. Every attribute that we are, uh, 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 ascribe to God the Father, God the Son, 
It's also God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit has the same attributes. Hmm? All powerful, all knowing. Hmm? Immutable. He changes not. Hmm? All the attributes of God are in us. All of the glory of God is in us. And it can, He can manifest any of those things anytime He wants through us. I have to say that. You say, well, Paul, you, 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 that's a tall order. That, that's a real tall order. But let me tell you something. This tall order is very tall because what I'm trying to get your mind, I'm trying to get your mindset so that you realize that it's not you doing the work, it's the Holy Spirit. And when you get used to the Holy Spirit using you, then you ain't going to want to do nothing but let the Holy Spirit use you. Hmm? Let Him use you. Allow Him to do the things that need to be done. Allow Him to say the things that need to be said through, through you. Hmm? You got you got to get him out of the box. Let him out of the box. <sighs> this mindset that all we got to do is go to church has got to be changed. We have to change that mindset. And it's going to come through preaching and teaching. It's going to come through preaching. It's going to come through teaching. We have God in us. And He wants to work. He wants to get out. He wants to do some things. Hmm? <laughs> you, you say, well, Paul, Paul you, 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 you pretty, <laughs> you pretty bold. I say, well, you say, well, why, why do you think you, you're pretty bold? Because last week you preached that. And, and, and sickness attacked your body. And you were sick all week. And you going to come back and preach it again? I have authority over sickness. <laughs> I've learned some things to do. Amen. 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 This mindset has to change. And it's only going to change through the preaching and the teaching of his word. You're going to have to hear this over and over again until you get it in you. Until you're using it. And when you start using it, then you're going to see, man, I should have been doing this years ago. Hmm? That's what I, that's the way I felt when I got saved. I got saved, I was 20, what, what was I, 27, almost 27 years old. And, and the first thing I said, man, I should have got saved a long time ago. If I knew, if I knew all of this, I would have got saved a long time ago. Hmm? But, here we go. Now let's look at the scripture. <laughs> Amen. I think I covered what I, what, what I wanted to rehash. Mm -hmm. I think I did. I think I did. I think I did. Yep, I did. Now, John 14, 12 says again, Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And when he went to his Father, he sent back the Holy Spirit. Hmm? The one verse said that, that God sent him back. Another verse said he sent him back. But the same thing. Same thing. Okay? Now, we have to start believing that 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 what Pastor Paul is, is is teaching is true. I can call myself Pastor Paul, Brother Paul. It don't matter. Whatever comes out of my mouth, that's what I say. So, but most of the time, I say Brother Paul. If you believe on Jesus, then you should be doing the same works and greater works. Hmm. And greater works. Ooh. Some people thought, oh, always want to say, because it's going to be more of us, that's why we're doing greater works than Jesus. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't believe that's what it is. We, I, I've, I've seen other scriptures that, that say that as Christians, we should be doing the works of Jesus Christ. Hmm? In 1 John, 
<laughs> Hello. We should be doing the same works that Jesus Christ did. We're no different. He walked on this earth in a body. He came through the birth canal. He had flesh. Regular old flesh. Just like yours and mine. Hmm? Just like yours. Just like mine. He had the same feelings. Same urges. Same, same, same thought patterns. He had to deal with. He had to deal with everything you got to deal with. He was in the flesh. He was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. But when God used him, he had to use him as man filled with the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Firstborn of the brethren. Hmm? Firstborn. First person. First person to be filled with the Holy Ghost. First person to, 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 to be a God man. The first person to be a new species of being. Hmm? He was the first person of many. And then what happened? He blew on the Holy, he blew, listen to this, he blew on, <laughs> on the disciples. Yes, he did. He blew on the disciples. I, but I believe that they, they they got the spirit right then and there. The Bible don't say it, but I, you know, hey, I use my sanctified imagination from here to from time to time. Amen. And, but we do know that on the day of Pentecost, that that they got it then. They really got it then. He took up his abode on the earth. The Holy Spirit took up his abode on the earth on the day of Pentecost. And when he took up his abode on the earth, it was a miraculous thing. It was an outpouring. Don't you know you can have your own, listen to this, you can have your own miraculous outpouring in your own home, in your own bedroom, in your own your couch. <laughs> Hello? What we need to do is learn to turn off the TV a little bit more and pray more, study more, give God more of our time, give him more of your time. The more of you you give him, the more of him, more of you he will use. Amen. The problem is, and, and I'm trying to get to, to, to the rest of this, but the problem is, for most Christians, listen to this, for most Christians, they have all of the Holy Ghost they want. They don't want no more. What did you say? I said they have all the Holy Ghost that they can stand. They don't want no more. Hmm? They go to church, the pastor pray for them, they fall on the floor. They get up, run around the church, dance and sweat out their hairdo, mess up their nice clothes, and go home and say we had a good time. And that's the Holy Ghost. No, that that, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing compared to what God, the Holy Spirit, wants to do in you and what he wants to do. But most people are satisfied with that. That experience. And they think that's what church is. They think that's what church is. And sometimes if you don't if you if you don't if you don't do all of that, you know, you ain't having church. Ain't nobody speaking in tongues, ain't ain't nobody running around the church and, and ain't nobody shouting and ain't nobody you know, nobody laying on the floors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. Don't get me wrong. I, I I see all of that. The problem, what I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to get you to see is that's not what the Holy Spirit or who the Holy Spirit is. Those are reactions to to the Holy Spirit moving on flesh. That's all that is. Now, what we need to do is find out why we need the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Now let's look at a, 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 another scripture. Uh, the scripture that Josiah read was in uh, 14, 20, 26. Uh, but we started at 25, I think. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comforter, 
or the comforter of the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Some Bibles, some Bibles uh, uh, don't don't use that. They they say advocate. Hmm? Hmm? The, the, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. You hear me? See, this time the Father will send in my name. But one place he said, Jesus said he will send. He shall teach you, uh-oh, all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's talking to the disciples. Listen to what he says. He will, he shall teach you all things. Well, what are you saying, Brother Paul? We don't need teachers. We just need the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. The 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 the, the setting and the context of this scripture is they they were the ones that turned the world upside down. But he had to teach them how to do it. Hmm. But he is the church's teacher. Hello. So those that are called to teach. That teach under under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Those those are the ones that we call anointed. Those are the ones we call that 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 that, that stand out. Those are the ones that that's doing the work because he's teaching through them. Hmm? My wife is an excellent teacher. I'm I'm more of a preacher, but my wife is an excellent teacher is because she's yielded herself to the Holy Spirit to do just that. Teach. Hmm? But he is the teacher, not Belinda. Does Belinda study? Yes. Does Belinda go to school? Yes. Does, does Belinda take time and pray? Yes. All those things. What, else? what are you saying? She needs to do all of that just to be able to get before the Holy Spirit and say, now, Holy Spirit, that I have it. Here, you use it the way you want to use it. Same thing I do. I have to, give it, I have to study. I have to, I have to go to school. I have to learn things. I have to pray. But when it comes time to preach, and, 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 and those of you who, who set up under my teaching, under my training to be, become pastors and, and elders, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. I teach you to study, but when you come up to preach, what do I tell you? Leave your notes at home. Hmm? Don't give me your notes. You gonna preach? Let the Holy Spirit preach through you. You've already studied. Now you learn. Now you preach. As the Holy Spirit gives it to you to preach. Why? Because he's the preacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Hmm? That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. And, 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 and I may have said this last week, but I'm going to say it again. We as a people, especially I'm talking right here in America, we as a people, we mess up. The English language is very difficult at best. And let me tell you something. We mess up with we mess up with words a lot. One of the biggest mess ups we do is that word anointing, anointed. You know, and 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 it's 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 enablement. That's what it means. It's enablement. But but enablement is talking about the Holy Spirit. He enables us to preach. He enables us to teach. He enables us to do the things that we do. That's what our, the Holy Spirit is the anointing. And people running around talking about my anointing this. Oh, oh, you don't want to go through what I had to get through to get my anointing. That's, that's hogwash. Come on down. Come on down to, to, to my church. I'll show you how I got my anointing. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, yeah, so I laugh. I laugh. I, sometimes I have to be. I have to be very careful watching watching TV because sometimes it's funny the stuff that I see. Hmm. Hmm. I was watching TV. I was watching TV this week. Last week the same thing happened. 
Two weeks in a row it has happened. And and what did I see? Gimmicks on TV. Gimmicks on TV. And 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 the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, See, he got started doing those gimmicks. Now he can't stop doing those gimmicks. Because he's doing these gimmicks to raise money. They're fundraising gimmicks. Hmm? I said, I just don't like this brother. That's right. Now, now he's selling everything. <laughs> you, you, if it ain't tied down, he's, he's selling it. And the purpose of the ministry is to minister God's word and, and, and pray for people. And, and he's taking a whole lot of time with a whole lot of stuff that don't really matter. Gimmicks. But the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's the teacher. And look at this, what he says. And he says, And he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. All things. He'll bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, he's talking to the disciples, but if you study God's word, and I'm going to show you this. This is, this is something that happens on a regular basis with me. I know my wife. That, 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 that we, we, we be, we be talking and, and, and the Spirit would give us a, a particular scripture that we ain't thought about, probably ain't read in years, months maybe. And it comes back up in us and, and we know because we don't got that scripture down in us. And I'll teach you how to do that. I've, I've taught it already. I'll teach it again. But you got to, it's not enough having head knowledge. It has to get down in your spirit. That's where it becomes faith at. That's where it becomes rhema at. When it gets down in you. In your spirit, man. That's where faith is generated. Hmm? And he'll bring things back to your remembrance. He'll bring things back to your remembrance as you need them. As you need them. Mm-hmm. But if you haven't remembered it, how are you going to remember? Mm-hmm. If you haven't remembered, how are you going to re? How can he remember? He can't redo something you have not done. He is a helper. He is not a doer. He's the Holy Spirit. He's a comforter. He's a helper. He will help you to do what needs to be done. Hmm? He'll do his part. You've got to do your part. There's a part for you to play. Hmm? Uh, let me see. Where was I at? Okay. He's a, he, he, he's a helper. Hmm? He's a teacher. He's a comforter. Hmm? And the, the, in 1526, it says, But when the comforter is come, whom I will send, there you go, I will send, Jesus said, I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. What is he? The Spirit of truth. Hmm? Which proceeded forth from the Father. He shall testify of me. Hmm? So, we, we, we have the Spirit of truth who's going to help us to Testify of the things of Jesus Christ, and, and Jesus. One of his one of his titles is the Word. So he'll give you the truth of the Word. He'll he'll shine the light on the Word, so so he illuminates the Word, so that we get that, that, that we get a better understanding of it. Hello, he's our teacher. He's our comforter. He brings comfort. Don't you know he gives me peace sometimes when I when I try when I try to worry. <laughs> he, he, he just won't let me do it. He won't let me do it. He he, he comforts me. Hmm? <sighs> and you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Hello. Listen to this. We're in the 16th chapter now. 16th chapter of John. Of John. Let's look at that 7th verse. 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus talking. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. It, it seems as if the three had their turns. In the Old Testament, God showed up. In the Gospels, Jesus showed up. In Acts, the Holy Ghost showed up. But they didn't all come together at one time and make their abode on the earth together in the fullness of God. Oh, it blew this place up. <laughs> Look what Jesus did. Now think about the fullness of the Spirit, the fullness of Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Father on earth. Oh, that would have been a, that would have been a sight to see. <laughs> Amen. But they were they they for some reason they've chosen not to come down here together. Oh, it's just too much. Hmm. And when he has come, wait a minute, wait a minute, what do you say? For if I do not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Hmm? And of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Let, let, let me let me let me run this by you on in in John sixteen from the new the NLT. Let me run this from the NLT to you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. He, said, you know, he didn't say confident, he said advocate. So, some, someone to please your case for you. Hmm? If, I, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Him is the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he, Holy Spirit, will convict the world of sin. And of God's righteousness. And of the coming judgment. The world's sin... The world's sin, the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Hmm? Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. Talking about the devil. He's already been judged. Hmm? And then it says this. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. Huh? See, see, you need the Holy Spirit to understand God's word. He said, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it. But when, but when the Holy, when the Spirit of truth comes, hmm, he will guide you into all truth. Hmm? He will guide you. You'll be able to, to understand what the spirit, what the scripture is saying to you. You will be able to understand and hear what God is saying to you because the spirit of truth is in you. He will not allow you to be misled. We need to step out on God. When he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. But he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. Hmm? Jump back. I say I, I said it was in, 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 in first John, it's also in John. It says thirteen. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. We need that guidance. He will speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about what? The future. Why does the Spirit need to tell you about the past? <laughs> Hello? Why does the Holy Spirit need to tell you about the past? 
better, you better listen to what I'm saying. Because if you, if you allow me, by way of the Holy Spirit, to teach you, you will learn that there are imposters out here calling themselves prophets, and they're not prophets at all. A lot of them are using the occult. A lot of them are using witchcraft. A lot of them are using uh, <laughs> roots. Come on here. I know what I'm talking about. It's out there. Be careful. Hmm? He will tell you about the future. What? The Holy Spirit. He knows. He's already there. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. Ain't, ain't it beautiful that the Holy Spirit can be in billions of people at the same time? Not be stressed. Hmm. Lord Jesus. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and this is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Jesus said, I'm getting it from the Father, and the Spirit going to get it from me. So what we're getting is straight from God. Hello? What we're getting is straight from God. We need the Holy Spirit. Now you see, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit moving. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us into all truth, to help us to understand His Word. Let me tell you something. When I first cracked open the Bible, let me tell you something. I, I was so confused. But the Holy Spirit brought it. He used different methods, but He gave, he gave me a better understanding. I did not give up. Hmm? He wants to use us. And the only way he's going to use us is if he has you in his hands. You can't use a tool unless you put it in your hand. If you're going to be a tool for the Holy Ghost, you got you to gotta put yourself in his hands. How are you going to do that? You're going to prepare yourself by knowing his word. You're going to give him enough time to talk to you back and forth so that you can hear and know the voice of God. That's how you're going to, you, you, you got to put yourself in his hands. And when you put yourself in his hands, he will use you. He wants to use you. It don't matter, it don't matter who you are, where you are. I had a conversation with my wife uh, last Saturday, not this Saturday, but last Saturday. I took her to dinner, took her to lunch to her favorite place, Chick Fil A. <laughs> Take her to Chick Fil A, she happy. But anyway, took her to Chick Fil A. We sat down and we talked over in Beltsville, and and we sat down and we, and we just had a great conversation. And 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 one of the things I said is. We have to be very careful because God has promised us a multicultural church, a multicultural following. Hello? It's time, time out for the good old boys club. The boys club. You know, you know. You know. We do, we do things for each other. The boys. But let me tell you something. It's time out for the girls club too. Hmm? I know women rock, women rule. I, I I understand all that, but 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 in Christ there is there is not neither male nor female. Hmm? There is neither black nor white. There is neither Hispanic or, or black. <laughs> Hello, are you with me? The, 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 yeah. I'm saying all of that to say one of the one of the things that you have to be very careful with. In being used with God is your prejudices. You have to get those out. Let 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 it out. Let let it go. Forgive and, and, and keep on moving. Well, what are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying forgive and keep on moving. That's what I'm saying. Forgive. Let it go. Whatever it is. Hmm? We have to deal with our prejudices. We have to deal with our with, 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 with hatred. Because that's what a lot of it is. It's hatred. We have to let that go. Hatred is murder, the Bible says. Hmm? 
We have to let these things go so that we can be free to be you. God can't use nobody that 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 that, that don't like some. I don't like this one because they're, they're they're of their color, or I don't like this one because they speak another language. He can't handle that kind of craziness. How, what you going to do when, when when the Bible said freely I you have received freely give. You get ready to pray for somebody and you don't want to pray for them because. They're Hispanic. You don't want to pray for them because they're white. Come on. Something's wrong with that picture. Hmm? Something's very wrong with that picture. I was in the car one day. And I had Terry McAlman on. Uh, You deserve the glory. Anointed song. The power of God was all in the car. And this person says. He's white. Why are you listening to white music? I said, he ain't white. <laughs> He's a worshiper. <laughs> He's a worshiper. I don't care what color he is. He he worships, and I. he's one of my favorite worship leaders. He can lead me into the presence of God anytime. But we got too much hatred. And it's a lot of black on white hatred, just like it's white on black, and it's Spanish on Spanish on white, Spanish on black. Hello, it's everywhere. It's all mixed up. But what I'm saying to the people, the friends of hope, hmm? the people that that, that 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 hang out with hope, let it go, let it go, because we're not we're not into that. We're not into that. It. The good old boys club has to go. The good old girls club has to go. I'm telling you, get out of your clicks. Get out of your clicks because clicking don't work. Favoritism don't work. Hmm? It doesn't work. What are you saying, Brother Paul? God wants to use us. And he can't use us any kind of way. That's all I'm saying. Hmm? That's all I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is in us, and He's the Spirit of Truth. He knows where yet. He knows what it's about. Hmm? I, I I sometimes listen to people talk, and I listen to this one particular person, and they were talking about this and that and that, and and I'm saying to myself, I remember when God gave her opportunity. To be delivered from her prejudices, and she and she wouldn't receive it. Hmm? I said, I remember a time when God gave her opportunity to be delivered from her prejudices, but she did not receive it. And and let me tell you something. God is working to work it out. The Holy Spirit in us is working in us to work it out. What are you saying, Brother Paul? He's going to work stuff out for you. He's the spirit of truth. He knows what's in there. He knows your motive. He knows your intent. He knows what you're going through. And he knows how to get it out of you. He knows how to work it out of you. He did me that way. Come on. I came from a KKK county. Shelby, North Carolina, Cleveland County, North Carolina, KKK County. Hmm? He had to get that hatred out of me. But he worked it out. But let me tell you something. All that God is doing now, do you see, do you, you see how rounded, well-rounded the messages are? He's, he's covering every area of our lives. Huh? Every area of our lives. Hmm? We need to realize that the Holy Spirit is, is getting us ready. He's getting us ready for, 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 for a great move. Our own revival. We're going to have our own revival. What you saying, Brother Paul? I believe the power of God is going to start using you guys. Not just me, but all of us. Hmm? Martinez family. It's five of y'all over there. Hmm? Five of y'all over there. Hmm? Five of us in here. <laughs> Hello? Come on. What are you saying? We got to get.
give ourselves over to God. God is the potter. We are the clay. Uh, let me read just a little bit. See when I'm right here. Hmm. 15th chapter of John. And I'm going to end with this. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit he purges it. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, nor more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men, that men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified hmm? that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Hmm? So you shall be my disciples. Abiding. Abiding means you have to you have to give yourself over to him. Hmm? To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and everything that's within me. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm through. I'm through. Y'all through too. Amen. <laughs> Y'all through me again. again. Yeah, I don't know how long I preach, so I y'all y'all tend to turn me off whenever y'all want to. But that's all right. I'm gonna keep on preaching because God loves us, and I'm gonna keep on preaching to you until you get it. It's not grievous for me, the Apostle Paul said, to preach the same thing to you uh, uh, over and over again. Because to you, it's safe. It's safe for you. Until you get what God is saying to you, then, 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 then you're in jeopardy of not being used to God. And I believe that everybody on, on the Zoom is wanting to be used to God. I believe everybody on, on, on the TV station wants to be used of God. But there may be somebody here that don't know Jesus. Somebody's going to hear this and they don't know Jesus. The thing to do right now is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. He died on the cross in your place. He died that you might have right to the, to the tree of life. Hmm? To live with him in heaven forever. Hmm? Repent of your sins. Hmm? Ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sins. Trust in him. Trust in the work that he did on the cross for you. Trust that he did it for you. Call on him. Call on him out of your heart. Tell him that you've had, you need a change. Tell him you need to be forgiven.